Yep. Welcome to the Shaw's Law Podcast. You know who I am and what I do. Rob Shaw, a.k.a. The Pod God, a.k.a. Harry Potter. And today I have a special guest with me. I have Renee LaRue. How are you, Renee? Good. Fine, thank you. Renee is the founder and CEO of the Upstate New York Basketball Hall of Fame. Actually, we are now the New York State Basketball Hall of Fame. Oh, oh, no more upstate? No more upstate, full state. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. We, it now joins the New York State uh, Baseball Hall of Fame and the New York State Hockey Hall of Fame. We run all three. That's awesome. So people that have listened to me for a long time know that you are the type of person I'm obsessed with. <laughs> you are somebody who loves sports in the same way I do. And I love that because not all of us are going to go to the NBA, the NFL, or play Major League Baseball or whatever sport we love. But you have found a way to still be involved. So, like, those, I gravitate to people like you because that's how I see myself. I wasn't going to the NBA, but I love sports. So, I went to school to be involved with sports. Yes. So what's your basketball story? Uh, I, I played in high school, rarely. Uh, I could shoot, but that was about it. Uh, in college, um, I played at Skidmore College on their team, which is D3. They play Union, RPI, Hobart, Hamilton, mm-hmm. Plattsburgh, Potsdam, schools like that. It's good competitive basketball. Played a little bit there. Uh, it was okay. Uh, a role player, happy to be on the team, happy to practice with the guys. And um, I, I, like you, also love the game. Uh, so we've been, it's been a love affair ever since. Uh, I grew up, unfortunately, a Nick fan. Yikes. Back when Walt Frazier and Willis Reed and Earl Monroe and Dave DeBusher played. And that was in 73, I think, that won the last championship. I'm 66 now. I was 17 then. So it's been a long, long drink of wait for a drink from the fountain for the Knicks. Uh, But, you know, I watched them last night. They were great. They won. Uh, They play defense. It's fun basketball. Um, One of our inductees on April 23rd is Terrell Harris. He grew up in Ravina, New York. Okay. He's a great player. Started off in junior college. Ended up at Murray State. He's a big-time player. His son, Tobias Harris, is the power forward for the 76ers. Yeah, uh, Tobias Harris went to Tennessee. He played uh, City Rocks. Yeah, City Rocks. Played City Rocks AAU. And you brought up Murray State. Um, We have a local kid at Murray State now. Uh, good. Good. Brian Moore from uh, originally from Harlem, but uh, moved up to Kingston, New York, is at good. Murray State right now after doing two years of junior college, and he's good. having a really nice season. So this year we're really excited for April twenty third because we're going to have some special people be- come to support Terrell at his induction. Uh, he's an agent you know, an NBA agent. Um, he's very close to people like Adam Silver, commissioner for the NBA. Um, we're having a, a very a guy way before your time, four-time NBA scoring champ, George the Iceman Gervin. Gervin. Yes. <laughs> and he had this I, really iconic poster that said the Iceman cometh. Yeah, that's it. When, when that's he's it. sitting there and, like, they're the, uh, they're the basketballs made out of ice. Yes, exactly. That poster on eBay is like $400 now, the original poster. But he, he's coming up from San Antonio with his wife, um, and we're thrilled. He's just a wonderful guy. At our event, you might be sitting next to him. You know, there are, all these people are accessible. You could take pictures with them. I don't want to graph a picture. They're all regular people. It's They're just like you and I. Um, when we're in that room, receptions of four, the dinners of four forty-five, but it's all about love, and there's a feeling of warmth and respect in the room. All these sort of, all these inductees sort of know each other one way or the other. 
Curtis Blackmore was one of the greatest players Ravina ever had. He's in the Hall of Fame at University of Buffalo. Okay. He told me he played against George in college. When George was at Eastern Michigan, he was at University of Buffalo. Curtis Blackmore was an iconic player in the late 60s. Um, Pat Riley, the president of the Miami Heat, used to coach the Knicks. He coached the Magic Johnson and Showtime Lakers in L.A. And he's a um, Schenectady guy, I believe. He's a Schenectady, yeah. So so our, our event, you never know who's going to come. But you turn around and you say, oh, my God, there's Charles Oakley. There's Julius Sir. I mean, you, like, you're, you're not going to – the people that you see are amazing, but they're there just like everybody else. They're there to love the game, to show support. Each inductee gets to speak for 10 minutes. We time their speeches. That's the secret sauce. You can't go longer than 10 minutes because the audience gets restless. They start looking And it's a at production. It, it, if, if everybody goes an extra two minutes and you have 10 inductees, it's another 20 minutes to something that's already a long night right. in an event. We, we, we choreograph this night by the minute. That's why we don't have people introduce inductees. I do the introducing, except for George. George will introduce, introduce Terrell Harris. <clears throat> that's a special occasion, but the rest of the inductees, I will induct them. I will, you know, and that's the way they do it in Springfield. The, the, the guy who's at the mic, he may bring up Larry Bird and Magic Johnson to support the inductee, but they don't speak. Mm -hmm. So by choreographing it by the minute, it moves along. We, we induct right through dinner. It works well keeps the evening moving um really really thrilled uh we got confirmation sunday night sheila dixon is going to be inducted sheila dixon played varsity in the eighth grade at schenectady high school that's a big time city basketball albany schenectady troy mm -hmm. mount vernon big time basketball she got a four-year scholarship to brown university had a tremendous career at Brown, played nine years in Spain and a year in Scotland, still lives in Spain, flying over to be inducted on April 23rd. All right, so and you got me going. I have you, questions. You, you, you Googled Sheila Dixon and just an amazing, we, we generally induct one woman player a year. We wanted to induct her for seven, eight years. So finally the dates aligned and we're able to get her to come so i'm just thrilled she's she's one of our class this year um you know we do uh college coaches high school coaches referees uh nba players nba coaches um so it's all uh it, it's a very diverse group of people uh we've done it for a long time so we've sort of worked the kinks out a little bit but it's just thrilling. It's just so much fun because we're we're honoring their life. Basketball is, is the landscape, but anybody who's successful in basketball or accounting or medicine, they're successful in life. And this this is the the you know the umbrella that we do it under, but they're magnificent people, and that's our key. We induct good people, you know, people that have in some way given back to society helped out reached out done clinics been generous to the community uh really you know I, you know we've done so many of these the thrill for me is meeting these people shaking their hands you know it's just amazing um you know i could fill your night with stories about you might have to. Basketball experiences it's just amazing so um, how did you this is obviously a passion project and something you love. Yes. How did this come about? Uh, my son went to high school at Catholic Central in Troy, and they were doing poorly financially. They're still open. They're actually the top ranked team in upstate New York now. Uh, but they, uh, the school was hurting as all Catholic schools are. Enrollments down. So I wanted to do a fundraiser for them. So I did a Hall of Fame magazine on the great players that went to Catholic High. So when I did that magazine, one of the gentlemen said to me, I want you to go meet Barry Kramer. 
And I'm like, oh my God, I'd love to meet Barry Kramer. So Barry Kramer in Schenectady was two years older than Pat Riley. And he was a huge star at NYU. Okay. They were a top team in the country, Division One. They had a guy named Happy Harrison who played with the Lakers with Will Chamberlain. He was Barry's teammate. They were loaded. They played Duke. They played Kentucky. So Barry uh, had a tremendous career at NYU. First round NBA draft pick ahead of Willis Reed. Sixth in the draft from Schenectady, New York. Play, plays with the Knicks. Uh, does well. Played against Oscar Robertson. Played against the greats. Season finishes. He comes home. He married his high school sweetheart. And she says, if you think that I married you for you to be on the road playing basketball nine months a year, you're mistaken. You're done. You're retired. So Barry, being the dutiful husband, said, okay. So he goes to N- to Albany Law School and becomes a lawyer. Over the years, he becomes a New York State Supreme Court judge. Holy smokes. From the NBA to a New York State Supreme Court judge. Howard Garfinkel is a guy who was a legendary New York City basketball guru. Gets up and gives his speech. He's paying tribute to Barry and says, you went from being a success on one court to another court. It's a jewel of a line. Oh, my God. It's a great line. And Barry is, um, I'll tell you one really good story that you need to know. So we're inducting uh, Garth, and he tells me, he gives me his Rolodex. Call Bobby Knight. Call Mike Krzyzewski. Call George Raveling. George Raveling is the first D1 African-American coach in college basketball. He went to George Washington College. So as a young guy, George is 6'6", 6'5", about 275. He's walking in the in the lunchroom. And a bunch of guys walk up to him and said, would you do us a favor? He goes, what do you need? He goes, we'd like you to help be security for Dr. Martin Luther King tomorrow at his speech. So George goes, sure, love to. So... The next day, Dr. King gives his speech, the I Have a Dream speech. At the, He's up on a pulpit. Two or three feet lower on the left next to Dr. King is George Raveling. Security detail. Dr. King gives his speech, which was written on a piece of paper, typed on a piece of paper. Dr. King goes to help him down from the, from the podium takes him by the hand and says, Dr. King, can I have your speech? He gives him the original speech. Really? The original, he has it in a psalm framed, treated by, um, you know, famous restoration people. It's in his basement. It's in his basement. That's, uh, that's a story. I, I'm sitting in Kansas City at, at the National Collegiate Basketball Hall of Fame induction for Garth. Grand Hill, Shaquille O'Neal. George Raveling walks in the lobby at about 1030 at night. And, and we're friends because he came to my event for George, for Garth. So we, we sat in the lobby at the little, uh, like they had a little bar food area in the hotel lobby in Kansas City. We talked for like two hours. He told me the whole story. It's, it's like, I mean, I touch him, he touches Dr. King. Yeah, like I mean, uh, how close, Um, what is it, uh, seven degrees seven of separation? Degrees of Kevin Bacon or something like that. Yeah. But so George Raveling gets up to give his speech at my event. And he looks around and he goes, ladies and gentlemen, he goes, I'll talk about basketball in a minute. But he goes, I want to tell everybody that you should read every day of your life, a newspaper, a magazine, a book. Take your time and read and learn every day. He was so good. He's such a good guy. He was in China representing Nike. He was a Nike executive. 
So I called him. He's in L.A. I said, I'm inviting you to come for Garf, reducting Garf. He goes, oh, Randy, he goes, I'll do anything for him. Let me, let, me, let me send Garf a check to help him out. He wasn't doing well financially. He goes, but I just got back from China. I live in L.A. I fly across country to upstate New York to Albany Airport to have dinner with Garf. And then he goes, I just got back from China. He goes, it's just too much flying. He's an older guy. I said, George, quite okay. I said, uh, we're just excited George is getting the Barry Kramer Lifetime Achievement Award. George goes, whose name did you just say? I said, Barry Kramer. He goes, not the NYU New York Dick Barry Kramer. I said, yeah, that's him. He goes, is he still alive? I said, oh yeah. He goes, I'm coming. I'm coming. I want to meet. I want to shake. I haven't seen him in so long. Can I sit at his table? I said, absolutely. I mean, it, it was like having George Raveling come to my event, and he wanted to come to meet Barry. And they get, and they, they get excited about, like, the same way we get inspired by them. They get inspired by the generation yes. before them, and that's what it sounded like. You, he sounded like you r- roped in one of his boyhood idols. <laughs> I did. I did. Barry's still alive. He's, like, 80, uh, and he he's slowing down a little, but he, he still looks good. He's healthy watches basketball every night in season you can't call him from seven to nine his wife will say man he, he's watching the next i'm sorry he won't he doesn't take calls during a game he takes basketball real seriously you know and uh it just but a, a prince of a man and i was telling adam silver the nba commissioner barry story he couldn't believe it an nba player became a new york state supreme court judge which is, I, I'm going to jump in and do my research on this probably all day tomorrow. Like now that you've told me, like, I need to, I want to educate my friends. I want to just like, this is why I do the pod so that I can have people on like you and expand my knowledge of the game. And hopefully somebody else listens to this and they get something from it. Before I forget, I would love to have you as my guest at our dinner on Sunday, April 23rd at the Hilton hotel. Feel free to bring a guest. I'll give you two free complimentary tickets. I will be there then. I. It's Sunday, four o'clock reception. Dinner at four forty-five, and you never know whose table you're going to be sitting at. No, I you will. I, I will definitely be there. I. Ecsta- I'm ecstatic for the invite. Um, I do want to just run through a couple questions for you, um, okay. and then I'd love. I, I'll, I'll take a few more stories as well. Sure. Um. So you told me that you came up with the idea, or no, you started that. You did a magazine for Catholic, uh, Central Catholic. Right, right. And and then it morphed into an actual Hall of I, Fame. I got to meet Barry Kramer. The guy at that dinner table that night said, I want you to meet Judge Kramer. I'm like, oh, yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> so while I was interviewing him for a book that I wrote, <clears throat> the idea just dawned on me. He's not in any Hall of Fame. Why isn't this guy... He should be in a life hall of fame. It just dawned on me in his judges chambers to start the hall of fame with him as inductee number one. All right. So what's the process from there? So that, so then I go, uh, I make some phone calls. uh, And the guy said, we'll do anything we want you to, you want us to do, but you can't ask us for any money. I said, no, 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 don't need any money. I'll handle it all. So, um, one guy took me to this banquet hall and we went in to book the room and I had to pay the guy up front and he goes, how many? And I said, two fifty. And he goes, what for? And I said, basketball hall of fame dinner. And he looks at my friend who's an older Italian guy and he goes, you're never going to get 250 people. And the guy goes, Dominic said, well, you know, he might, he goes, I'm telling you, you're, I'm, I can't give you your money back. Once it's paid, it's paid. No refunds. I'm like, okay, that's fine. So, um, that night, we didn't get 250 people. We got 450 people. Oh, Amazing. Beautiful. Sam Perkins walks in the door. Sam Perkins, Shaker High School, North Carolina, Michael Jordan's best friend, starred in North Carolina, played for the Dallas Mavericks, Seattle Supersonics, Sam Perkins. I mean, a nicer guy you'll never meet. That night, 
I had chairs and tables for 250. I had 150 people standing around the wall that just wanted to listen to the speeches. Yeah, It was amazing. I couldn't believe it. So then I knew, I mean, I did a good thing, but I didn't allow for the amount of people that just showed up. I don't even advertise tickets. I don't sell tickets to the public. People, people Word of mouth. Talk. They want to yeah, be the, there. Each inductee calls and says, I need 20, I need 30, I need 40. One guy bought 80 tickets one year because it's that it has that kind of meaning to them. They get to share it with their family, their friends, you know, it's, it's special. It's amazing. And a, on a real quick note, Sam Perkins is one of the few guys that when we talk about, man, this dude would have made a killing in today's NBA. Sam Perkins could oh. shoot the three back then when it was so foreign for a big Sam Perkins missed out on a lot of money just by because in today's generation, he's a stretch big. He's a stretch big. He could run the floor too. And no, no, he was he was athletic. He could move, but big guys didn't have that kind of range back then. His nickname is Big Smooth. That's a good nickname. He, he, we go end up at the same church on some Sundays. It's always nice to see him when he's in town. It's a great guy. Um. How much time do you commit to the basketball, the New York basketball? It's a, it's a full year at all three events, all three sports, 365 days a year. Even on Christmas Day, I'll call somebody and say, congratulations, you've been selected for induction to the New York State Basketball Hall of Fame. And when they get that call on Christmas Day, they freak out. They're like, oh, my God, are you serious? It's like a Christmas present. It's another yeah, Christmas, Christmas present. present. So it's 365 days a year. I love it. Uh, it's a it's a labor of love and and it's bringing love into people's lives. It's just an all it, I give back by doing this by doing this Hall of Fame. And the hard thing is I have a hundred names for each sport to go down, and we induct 15, 16, 14 people a year. So I've got to cut down 180, 60, 40, 20, and it's hard because I've got a big state. Buffalo, Syracuse, Rochester, Utica, Potsdam, Plattsburgh, Kingston, White Plains. Yeah. Uh, we did Lowe's Moore from, uh, where are all the, Scooter McRae from, Henry. Uh, Mount Vernon is loaded with basketball players. You said Mount Vernon? Yeah. The money earned I mean, in Mount Vernon. City, Long I mean, you know, it's amazing. Uh, it's a huge state. So being inducted into Salt Bay is hard. It's, is there a committee or are you the yeah. chairperson? Uh, what what does induction look like or I, the process? I appointed, a, I appointed a board. And when someone calls and says Sam Perkins, I'll call each in the board member individually and say, tell me good and bad. Why yes, why no? And then when they all agree, first ballot, yes, that's easy. But sometimes people will say, well, he's a little young. Let's try and get a few of the older guys in first or um you know there's, there's a variety of things you know it's a character hall of fame so that trumps production that trumps baskets or home runs so we like guys that have a good story the kramer story becoming a judge george raveling working for nike we, we like the accompanying stories that go along with you. You doing your podcast is significant. It's it's wonderful in this society, in today's world. You're doing your thing, and you're growing the game because of your love of the game. And, and that's why I wanted you. Like, people like you and I are, I just, like, you just love it so much that, hey, even though I can't play anymore or I didn't go as far as I wanted to, I need to be involved with it. Right, right. Yeah, it's, you know, it's really every day uh, in the morning I'll wake up, I'll check the computer for to answer emails or questions. In the afternoon, uh, I work from a library because it's quiet. I can think, I can type proposals or thank you letters. I can do all my mailings from the library. Then I come home and I'm back on the phone again. I'm back on the phone, returning phone calls. And the really weird thing is, up until this year, up until January 1st, I thought I had it set perfectly. I thought I had basketball four months, baseball four months, hockey four months. I thought I was like, 
I thought I was really a smart guy. But then all of a sudden, one day, I got a phone call for each sport. And a, and a phone call is typically 45 minutes. Hung up the phone, the phone rang, it was the next sport. Talked to the guy for 45 minutes, hung up, the phone rang again, like within five seconds. It went from hockey, basketball, baseball. And it's been that way every day since this year. So I'm doing three things at the same time. Now, is that because you're starting to grow? Like, yeah, Well, we've grown exponentially each year. And I think that's why you're seeing that there's no off season for even the sport in the off season because this is important to people. It matters. Exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah, it, that's, it's actually, I'm happy with it. But at the same time, I only have so many hours in the day and I have to get each, like right now, basketball is April 23rd. That's 10 weeks away. That'll be here like tomorrow. It'll be spring. You know, and, and we decorate the room. When you we open the doors, each inductee has a four foot by eight foot banner on vinyl with ten pictures of that inductee on the on the banner. We hang them around the room. So when you walk in, it knocks you back. You're like, oh my god, look at these pictures. It's amazing. You know, it really the room has a vibe to it. You know, it's great. All right, so what are some of your favorite inductee stories? Like, um, just get, rattle off a couple of your favorite memories. Well, you know, I never got to meet Jim Valvano, North Carolina State, JV. Beats, Houston, Akeem Olajuwon. F uh, Philly Slamma Jamma, Five Slamma Jamma. Five Slamma Jamma. The guard who took that shot the air ball? at the end of the game, Jarek Wimberg, shoots it, it's short. Lorenzo Charles takes the ball. Dunks it. They win by one at the ball. Valvano loses his mind. He's running around. You know, it's an Derek, epic scene. Derek Wittenberg came up for guard, and we got to be best friends. And he got up, and he gets up to the speech, and he goes, you know, Gar, I was at your camp. And he goes, um, I nailed that camp. He goes, I was the best player every single day. And yet you gave the last all-star spot of the camp to some dude named Michael Jordan. He goes, how could you pick Michael Jordan instead of me? You know? <laughs> so it's funny because when Derek was a senior and they made that run, they had to beat Sam and Michael. They had to beat North Carolina in the ACC tournament. He's telling the story. Now, Derek and I both are food guys. We love food. You know, we tell food stories. Have you tried this recipe? My God, where, where is the best dish you ever had? So he came up and he, he just was such a great speaker and guest. He's an infectiously a wonderful man, you know. So Derek Wittenberg's in the top five ever. Uh, Rabbling, top five. Barry Kramer, when he comes and speaks, top five. Uh, we had a guy named Jimmer for Detcom, oh. who was a star for BYU. BYU, and he's a High Falls kid. Yeah, well, Glens Falls. Yeah. Glens Falls, I'm sorry. Yeah, Glens Falls. And, and so... I think he's still playing in China now, years later. He's played in the NBA for a while, Sacramento. Uh, Number 10 pick. All the balls a little bit, next a little bit. Um, the game, as you know, is changing in the NBA. So the positions have changed. Other than Joel Embiid and maybe Anthony Davis, you don't see a lot of dominant centers like Bill Russell or Will, you know, Willis Reed, guys like that. You see guys that can run the floor, you know. Uh, and like even uh, Tobias Harris mm -hmm. is what he's fast. He can jump. He can shoot the lights out. Uh, he oh shoots so, the dimples off the ball. Yeah, and and, and Jimmer, even though he's a great shooter, couldn't really match up defensively, so they would exploit him. But he's just the nicest kid. And uh, when he played here, a guy named Taylor Battle played at Penn State. I'm familiar he's with Taylor all, Battle. All time leading scorer at Penn State great guy he was a great inductee thrilled the guy who owns the albany city rocks jimmy ray hart mm -hmm. great great guy he has eight or nine city rocks teams he probably has more than that it, it, like yeah. they start really young he really? has more than that he, he and i were both stockbrokers he's still a stockbroker i was a stockbroker i retired when i was 52. when i retired on a monday I started the Basketball Hall of Fame on a Tuesday. I never really retired. I've been doing this 
since the next day I was working for myself. And it was the right thing. It was great. You know, I, like you're a little nervous because you want everybody to have a good time. You want everybody to enjoy. They, my guests are as important as the inductees. I want everybody to have a great night that night. You know, we'll do anything we can to make your night a successful, happy night. You know, uh, and, and I urge people, you want to go meet uh, George Gerben, go up, shake his hand, you know. And I tell those guys to, to be gracious, to do that, you know. Baseball guy's a little bit different because you can't bring a dozen baseballs and have them sign. It's not an event like that. It's not a signing event. It's a Hall of Fame induction. Yeah. But basketballs, take your picture with these guys. They'll love it. They like the attention. They want to make friends. They're, it, it just, uh, it's just, people are wonderful. You know, it, with all the things in the world going on and sometimes the news stresses negative stuff, you don't see things like this enough where there's so much love and affection in the room you know it's, it's no, it really sounds amazing. like a beautiful event i'm ecstatic that you've extended an invite to me i can't think of anything i'd rather do uh where are you located right now i'm in kingston oh so you're an hour and a half away yeah not and a hop skip I, and a jump it's um and i'm up that way uh almost yearly uh we go to the gym rats tournament Sure. Yeah, uh, it's and the guy who runs that, Johnny K Mac, is in my hall of fame. Is he really? His dad's state his dad, Steve K Mac, was an assistant coach at SUNY Potsdam when they won not one, but two division three national championships in right. Potsdam, which is a <laughs> hockey town. No. The guy who coached the team was a guy named Jerry Welsh. He teaches a class at Duke. He's 90 years old still. So one, our, one of our inductees this year, Leroy Witherspoon. The first time they were in a national championship game, they're losing by two. Eight seconds left. They got to take the ball out of bounds, go the length of the floor. They inbounds it to Spoon. He dribbles four or five times, just gets inside a half court. Puts it on the rim. Swish. <laughs> Tie game, overtime. Now, this is in Augustana's home court in Ohio. They're playing on the other team's home court. When It's on YouTube. The game's on YouTube. Witherspoon, game winner. When he, when he hits the shot, the place was as quiet as a church. Quiet. He probably broke, what, four or 5,000 hearts in one flick of the wrist? More like 8,000, yeah. And so Spoon's being inducted this year. So, so Spoon's coming this year, as well as Brendan Mitchell, Troy Turner, all his teammates from that national championship team. And, and Spoon came up very di in a difficult neighborhood in Utica, New York. Not easy, you know. He overcame a lot to achieve success in college and in his life afterward. And I'm so happy for him. He's 60 now. Uh, but that shot... Who gets to hit a game tying shot from half court to send your to ultimately send your team to a national championship? Oh, and on the road, oh, I can't, can't oh on the a big shot on the road is better than a big shot at home. You got that right, exactly. So it's it's really uh, it's there's going to be some great stories that night. It's going to be a great uh, like I personally. Don't mind if speeches run a little long. I'm not going anywhere. We all spend the night in the hotel that night. I'm there till midnight telling stories and listening to stories. So I want the night to last for everyone. But you, you're you going to see George Gervin. You might not care about Spoon, you know. No, I no, no. I'm, I'm a student of the game. I'm going to soak it all in and be so happy. That's it. That's it. And if you're a student of the game, you're going to love this. It's going to be amazing, you know. No, uh, this sounds great. And, and if you want to interview, feel free if you want to interview somebody. If you say, hey, uh, can you pull so-and-so aside for me beforehand, I'll do that for you. I uh, Oh, you have no idea how much I appreciate this. Sure. I, I appreciate you having me on. You know, it's... Uh, you have a million stories, and I, I love the game, and you obviously love sports, because, like, I wanted to talk just basketball with you, but... You turned this basketball project into baseball and hockey, and I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't ask you just a little bit about 
how basketball turned into two other Hall of Fames. We did baseball the very next year. I was approached by a group of people who said, we heard about your basketball dinner. We'd like you to do baseball for the state. And I'm like, okay, you know, sure. I have the time. Why not? It's fun. So um, hockey, we were going to do before COVID. Then COVID hit and shut everything down. I mean, life stopped for two years. So the Hockey Hall of Fame was supposed to be in 2018, but it ended up being last year of the first year. So another group of people came and asked me to do football because that would mean Giants, Jets, Buffalo Bills, Mm -hmm. Lawrence Taylor, Phil Sims, Joe Namath, uh, Andre Reid, Jim Kelly, like all those guys. I had to decline. I don't have time. Well, you're already 444, ideally. Uh, adding another one would put you three, 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 or yeah, three, three, I, three, I just, three. I can't do justice to it because the first year of anything is the most time centric. You have to put the most time in. Uh, the first year you lose money. It takes a lot of time financially, financially to get things to get to that dinner and to pay for everything. You, in subsequent years, you might be able to recoup some of that, but the first year. It's it's a loss loss proposition, and I'm fine. You know, I, I'm not doing it for the money. I could care less, uh, but I need the time. And I don't in football. I just don't have it. You know, people wanted me to do a soccer. I said I don't know anything about soccer. I know the other three sports. I know football a little bit. Those other like I never played a game of hockey in my life. I played basketball and baseball. I know the most about that. Uh, the the heart the most difficult part to all three Hall of Fames is when you call me tomorrow and you say, I want you to induct Daryl Strawberry on the Mets. So I believe in salvation, I believe in redemption, and I believe in turning the page. And Daryl Strawberry is a minister now in Iowa. And he and he's he went from the depths of heroin, cocaine addiction to straightening it, turning around, straightening it out. And, and I like I respect that in him, um, and, I, and I'd like to induct him. But then there's other people that may be more deserving, may be more worthy, kind of thing. So that's why those phone calls with the board guys, I try and take a back seat and let them tell me why this person should be considered more now. It might be Joe Stern, he might get it next year, or the year after. Some people are more of an emergent, urgent immediacy to their induction. Now, so, I have a question about, um, you said that you call each board member individually. Yes, we never meet together, never. Why? I think I know why, but I would, li- I would love to hear your answer. Too many chefs in the kitchen, for one. And two, I don't want one, two, and three to gang up on four and five. You don't want groupthink? Yes. Okay, that, yeah. that was why I thought you did it, and I just... I wanted to confirm because when you said it earlier, it stuck in my head because I guess in my brain, I had an idea of you guys being like the NCAA tournament committee all in one room discussing resumes. Yeah. Yeah. Like let's say I want to put strawberry in. You say, absolutely not. Well, I don't want you to color the other board guys in a positive or negative way, but we'll go out to lunch or dinner and sit down and talk. And it may take an hour or two, you know, uh, like, and, in many cases, it's very easy. I'll call each person, they'll say, absolutely. He's a Hall of Fame human being. Another story. When Sam Perkins was at Shaker High School, he played against Schenectady High, and their center was a guy named John Lee. And, and he was a big, strong guy. He's 300 pounds now. I never knew he played. So when he got nominated, I'm like, John Lee, the coach or Balsa Spock, that's the guy. I'm like, oh, he played? They said, oh, yeah. In high school, he could run and jump like a deer. He got 26 against Sam. Sam got 38, but John still got his 26, right? So he, he did have issues. He ultimately became a heroin addict, a cocaine addict. And on the street where our Hilton Hotel is, it's called Hoosick Street. When John gave his speech, he got up and he goes, ladies and gentlemen, 
30 years ago, I was on the street for a different reason. I was looking for my next fix. He said, I didn't have cab fare home. I was a junkie. And now, God willing, 30 years later, I'm standing on the same street being inducted into a hall of fame. He started to cry. We all started to cry. It was like such a touching moment. I mean, he, and, this, he, and this guy is such a wonderful human being. My top right-hand guy for the basketball fame stood up for him. He, he was in foster homes in high school. He stood up for him to help him stay in Schenectady. And I said, Pez, Big John, is he a Hall of Famer? He goes, Rennie, he's a Hall of Fame human being. Whoa, a Hall of Fame human being. That trumps the sport. You're a Hall of Fame human being. Man, that's incredible. How, what higher compliment could you give anybody than that? Yeah, that, you know, that is like, that's something you want to throw in your Twitter bio. Hall of Fame human. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I mean, there's there's so many, like I've developed so many warm, lasting friendships from this. And uh, we, I mean, we talk all the time, these people, they'll call, how you doing? I had a little cancer scare in December. God willing, everything came out okay. I had surgery and uh, a lot of prayers, you know, and prayer works. All right, Renee, I won't steal any more of your time. You've been so gracious with it. It was, I probably won't sleep tonight because like I'm, you have me on like a natural high. I'm super excited. <laughs> You'll have a great time. A um, great time. So I did, happy you could come. Um, is there anything you need to plug? Um, there's uh, the events are coming up. Uh, they should like yeah. the Facebook page. Uh, you know that uh, my Facebook page is under my name. So if anybody wants to look at some of the induction bios or something, they can just follow me on Facebook, and that's good. Um, Renee, once again, thank you so much for your time. Uh, wow. This was so much fun. I really appreciate it. Hey, Rob, so did I. Thank you so much. Have a great night. All right, guys, this has been the Show Us Law Podcast. And like that, we out.